Lenovo Legion Go S leaks has been confirmed with first AMD Ryzen Z2 Go processor. Geekom QS1 Pro mini PC specs has been leaked the first Qualcomm processor featuring these mini PCs. Onyx has unveiled their Arc B580, B570, Lumion Odyssey graphics cards. Intel Arc B580 low profile GPU with three fans also has been revealed. And lastly, Arc GPUs get two M.2 slots in integrated in the GPU. Okay, so first off from WinFuture, we get this information here, which is the Lenovo Legion Go S, the new gaming handheld with AMD Z2 Go processor has been revealed, basically a new APU coming from AMD Ryzen, which will be named as AMD Ryzen Z2 Go. And this is the handheld we're looking at, which is the Lenovo, Lenovo Legion Go S that will feature a new Ryzen APU that is the AMD Ryzen Z2 Go right over here, as you can see. And which will offer some serious performance here, which will which is 8 computing cores with clock rate of 3.0 GHz and 4 MB of L2 cache. And this chip is based on Zen 3 Plus architecture with integrated AMD Radeon 680M GPU, which is clearly a downgrade when you consider the Z1 Extreme. It's a downgrade because Z1 Extreme is based on Zen 4 architecture and this is on Zen 3 Plus architecture and also utilizing AMD Radeon 680M rather than 780M. So a downgrade in terms of performance. Although this APU is new, but it's a downgrade. So I don't understand what's going on here. But I guess for this particular handheld, handheld or any particular handheld, it should be good enough. And they're also claiming 55 watt hour battery. So I guess that should be also good enough. Coming with 16 gigabytes of LDDR5 RAM and one 512 gigabytes of SSD installed with PCIe 4 lane. Also coming with Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3. So that's not bad. That is modern enough. And the display size we're looking at is 8.8 .8 inches, so that should be sufficient, similar to the Z1 Extreme, so yeah. So in summary, we're looking at this kind of information, which is Lenovo. Lenovo is planning a cheaper gaming handheld, which is the AMD Ryzen Z2 Go chip, because it's clearly a bit worse than Z1 Extreme, but not too far off. Coming with 8 inches of L IPS LCD with full HD and 120Hz refresh rate also eight computing cores with three gigahertz which is the base no details for the max and of course the gpu is 680m gpu 16 gigs of ram 512 gigs of ssd storage with pci4 lane and 55.5 watt hour battery life wi-fi 6e bluetooth 5.3 and of course windows 11 support and the pricing we're looking at is approximately 600 euros and in this particular case, there's one feature that is not available compared to Legion Go is the fixed controller instead of removable ones. So yeah, in general, this is a cheaper model, but 600 euros for this particular handheld. Is it really worth it? We'll see. Next up, we have some information about the Geekom new Snapdragon X Elite based mini PC. In my previous video, we have already discussed about the leak, but now we have the confirmation or I should say the leak about the spec. So let's look into it. So the naming they're going for is the Geekom QS1 Pro. And these are the specifications we're looking at. So firstly, we have the chipset. We have the Qualcomm Snapdragon X1 E80. So basically, that's the X Snapdragon X Elite 12 core base processor. So a pretty decent processor right there. Also using the Qualcomm Adreno GPU, obviously with the processor it comes with it. So no surprise there, which is up to 4.6 teraflops of performance. We're looking at dual channel LPDDR5 5600MHz up to 64 gigs if you're utilizing 32 gigs of module par. So I'm guessing two modules, two slots are available. It also supports M.2 PCIe Gen 4x4, which is up to four, two terabytes of support. So not bad. Three USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type A and one USB 2.0 Type A. We also have Type C, so that is nothing surprising. One times USB 4.0 Type C will be available. One one times HDMI 2.0 that would be supporting up to 4K and of course one times DP 1.4 4K support and of course 3.5 millimeter headphone jack is also available 2.5 gigs of LAN so that's pretty nice and one SD card slot that is also pretty neat we'll have pre-installed Windows 11 Pro four times digital microphone one fingerprint unlock so that's also pretty decent and of course the dimension we're looking at 135.5 times 115.5 times 34.5 millimeter so a decent mini PC option that we can see from Snapdragon. So that is quite neat. And this is what it's going to look like. So yeah, it's a pretty decent looking mini PC with multiple features available. And this time around, they're going for Snapdragon Qualcomm Snapdragon X Elite processor. So the performance shouldn't 
be a problem here question is will it compete with the other mini pcs we'll see about that and next up we have onyx has revealed their arc gpus the battle mage gpu so these are the two gpus we're looking at the first one is right over here which is the intel arc 580 and then we have the in this black version coming with intel arc 580 and 570 so the white variant we're looking at is the name called lumi so intel arc p580 lumi series from onyx and the second one is the odyssey so this is the lumi card here so it looks pretty neat white variant of course so you can clearly tell it's a pretty decent looking gpu here so some specifications are given here should be similar to the p580 uh, specs but we'll look into it again the core frequency we're looking at 2740 megahertz with of course a vram we're looking at 12 gigs of 192 bit bus g06 19 gbps of speed we have less xe cores this time around but still it should be enough which is 20 xe cores photoshop unit will be 20 and of course M M xmx engine will be 160 and the total power consumption we're looking at 203 watts a bit overclocked definitely as the name suggests oc so shouldn't surprise it's going to be taking more than 200 watts and this is more of an in-depth picture of what they're utilizing. No vapor chamber, of course, isn't surprising. 203 watts processor or GPUs do not really require vapor chamber anyway, so that should be sufficient. Also, the card looks very neat. Not only that, they will have this particular ARGB light effect that you can install. And as it has ARGB effect, so you can literally change the color. So that's pretty nice. And next one, we have the Odyssey Repeat that they call it. The Odyssey Repeat Intel Arc 580. And of course, the 570, because this particular one will have two versions, of course. The 580 and the B570. And of course, the specs looks quite the same but a little bit less power consumption as it's not an overclocked version which is 193 watts even though not a big difference clearly and the core frequency goes down a little bit which is 2670 megahertz and again this particular gpu looks exactly the same but black variant with no air gb effect clearly and the rest of the things look similar quiet and durable fans and then power production blah 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 everything is available no worries so these two gpus are looking pretty neat not gonna lie so this is the first entry from onyx into the intel arc series next up we have a report from exp review about the intel arc again and this time around we have something in interesting coming from gunner intel and gunner of course they're combining again this time around for the battle mage gpus and this was their keynote discussing about the battle mage architecture and then their partnership with intel of course no surprising there and yeah there are these are the gpus we are looking at over here but there's one particular gpu that is quite interesting which is this one the tri version that looks like a three fan design but it has one catch however which is right over here you can see this this is the gpu we're looking at and this this is a low profile gpu basically this is a three fan design but it's low profile meaning it doesn't require any external power directly coming from pcie lane quite interesting that there's a three fan design but low powered gpu we have already seen from other companies doing that but gunner for arc series we are looking at this this is the first time we're looking at this particular gpu and we have more detailed picture here which is as you can tell there's no power connector here or even here but we don't really have to, we, we don't really have the Im image for that but we have the confirmation this is not is this does not require any external power just a pcie lane so that's good enough so low profile for sure but a bad news is this particular gpu will not be consumer based but rather than oem so yeah no way you any gamers will be able to grab this just for oem system builders i guess that's the only way to grab this one and lastly we have something interesting maxon has unveiled their intel arc b580 series of course no doubt about that and these are the two cards designs we're looking at a black one which is a two fan design and the second one would be a three fan design and also in white so we have the intel arc b580 icraft and the b580 milestone so obviously this is the icraft version of it which is the white variant of intel arc b580 from maxon they've already done that previously but not for intel arc gpus and now we have this series intel arc icraft b580 from maxon and of course the milestone which is going to be more of a less overclocked version but for this particular model we have something interesting here so video cards have already covered this and they basically got this information and that is this particular icraft version which is the white variant will have two ssd slots so there's no surprising this particular card is too big so they decided why not they add two ssd slam point two slots there which is kind of fascinating that they're doing this this is the actual pcb here of course and these are the dual you can already see the dual m.2 slots right over there 
And as I mentioned, this is the Maxon iCraft B580 without the non-SSD, non of course. Or I should say without the M.2 slots because they will have two particular models according to video cards here it says maxon has developed two versions of the icraft v v580 so one will have of course no m.2 slots another one will have similar design but one addition is there will be two m.2 slots so that's quite fascinating so we've already seen this kind of design from asus rtx 4080 ti they've already done that and there was a ssd right over there as you can see they've added one ssd slot but now we're clearly seeing that maxon has done this even further getting two m.2 slots here which is very fascinating indeed right now you don't really have to rely on your motherboard's ssd slots you can have the gpu itself with the ssd slot and not just one but two of them so that is pretty good i really like this approach here and there's also one particular reason why they're able to do this is because this particular lane is pcie x8 lane not x16 exactly so just because of x8 we have extra x8 available as we are putting this into the, into the x16 pci lane anyway in, in, in the motherboard so the other eight lanes will be wasted anyway so why not just add two m.2 slots which is pcie 4 or 5 probably pcie 4 because we don't really have information about which version they're going for is it going to be pcie 5 or pcie 4 my guess would be pcie 4 so they're going for pcie 4 Four times four lane for these two ssds filling up the x16 slot so that's a pretty good usage of it no wastage whatsoever so yeah this is a, this is a pretty interesting approach going with this particular gpu i think mo more gpu companies should do this as they can literally utilize those wasted x8 slots and utilize them properly so not bad